Hey, come stars, this is Mrs. Mandel. I bring you chapter nine, stoichiometry. Ooh, that's a fun word to say. Go ahead and say it. Stoichiometry, all right? Uh, so what are we going to be doing in this chapter? That's a good question. I'm glad you asked. Um, this chapter, I feel, is accumulation of what we've been doing the last several months. So we still need to know how to go from names and write down formulas correctly. Um, remember that was chapter seven. Then the last part of chapter seven, we learned how to go from mass to moles and liters and particles and, and remember doing all that stuff. All right. Yeah. We have to do that again in this chapter. Oh, what about chapter eight? Oh, that was our balancing the, the reactions and, um, predicting products chapter. Do you think we have to do that here? Yes, we do. We're going to put all those concepts together in what is called stoichiometry. And what is it? It's predicting amounts in reactions. Amounts of what? How much product or how much reactant, okay? So let's see what it officially says here. Stoichiometry is the process of determining how much product is made or how much reactant is needed during a chemical reaction. Don't you think this is really important? Well, if you think about it, yes. Industry is really concerned with something like this, all right? So let's just say you, you work for P&G and you're in the diaper uh, section, all right? Um, if you have so much of the, the, the reactants, don't you want to know how many diapers you're going to make? Don't you think the uh, the CEO of, of, uh, of P&G wants to know that? Well, yes, he does, or she, I don't know who it is. All right. Well, what about the opposite? Well, if I need, if the demand is so many diapers, well, how much reactants do I need to make that? Okay. So this concept is huge in really any industry, not just P&G and diapers. Okay. Um, so the the process that we're going to you know look into this chapter is really important in the real world. All right, to me this is one of the, the best chapters for real world application. Okay, so think about that as we are going through here. Okay, all right, let's keep going. As we know, in chemical reactions, atoms are conserved. What else is conserved? By the way, you might want to write down mass is also conserved. Very good. All right, and we show this in a balanced equation, okay? So let's check this out. Um, objective, I can use chemical equations to describe the meaning of coefficients. So what does a balanced chemical equation? This is a review from chapter eight. What does it tell us? Well, number one, which substances begin with other reactants and end with during the rearrangement process? Do you remember back in, in the very beginning, chapter one, uh, didn't we say that a chemical reaction is where bonds are broken and new bonds are formed? That's what we mean by this rearrangement process, okay? The other huge, huge, huge thing is it's the ratio of particles involved. This ratio can be either seen as a ratio of individual particles or as a ratio of moles. Let me show you something. So here's an equation of, of let's make some water. So what does this mean? I have two molecules of hydrogen gas plus one mole, or excuse me, one molecule of oxygen gas, and I can make two molecules of water vapor, okay? I didn't put in the little G's in there, but that, that's really what we're saying, okay? So how handy is it to have um, molecules? Um, not very. I cannot hold a molecule in my hand. All right, let's try this. Two moles of hydrogen gas and one mole of oxygen gas makes two moles of water vapor. Do you think in your heart of hearts we'll only have two moles of hydrogen and one mole of oxygen to make two moles of water? Could I have, I don't know, five moles of hydrogen gas and two and a half moles of oxygen gas? to make five moles of, of, of water vapor, all right? Or, or how about volume? Wouldn't volume make a whole lot more sense if we're talking about gases, all right? That's what we mean by ratios, okay? It's not always exactly two moles of hydrogen gas and one mole of oxygen gas, but it's a ratio of a two to one in moles, okay? That is a really important concept, okay? So let's see what section 9.1 is all about. It says using balanced chemical equations. So this is kind of what I was alluding to earlier. Uh, chemists use balanced equations as a basis to calculate how much reactant is needed or product is formed in a reaction. So stoichiometry is a calculation amount of substances involved in a chemical reaction. So this is the brownie mix. This is actually uh, from my brownie mix here in my cabinet, all right, in my kitchen, okay? One brownie mix 
plus one and a half cups of water plus a half a cup of oil and three eggs will get me 16 brownies. That, by the way, is the Ghirardelli. That is the super yummy kind of brownies. All right, so you need that stuff to make 16 brownies, okay? But wait a minute. What if I were feeling very, very generous, all right? And I, w I have a big class, apparently, and 16 brownies are not enough for bringing brownies in to my, to my chemistry students, all right? If I just brought 16 brownies in for, for my 20 students, don't you think four people are going to feel a little left out? Well, probably five people because I'm going to eat one too. All right. So I am have to make more brownies. Right. So if I'm feeling really generous and I want to make enough brownies for everyone, what do I have to do to my brownie recipe? Oh, I have to double it, don't I? I bet I have to double it. So that means I need two brownie mixes and three cups of water and one cup of oil and six eggs. All right, that makes sense, doesn't it? But what happens if word gets out? And my other classes heard that I brought this class some brownies. Don't you think they want some brownies too? I bet so. So what if I need 64 brownies? What do you think I need? Well, look back at my original equation here. If I need 64 brownies and one, one Ghirardelli makes only 16, all right, how many brownie mixes do I have? What should I do to this number? I need to multiply it by four. That's right. What should I do about water? I need to multiply it by four. What would I do about my cups of oil? I need to multiply it by four. What should I do with my eggs? I need to multiply it by four. All right, and now I have enough for for two classes and i'm sure my third class is going to hear about it so you know i might have to make some more but that's the idea that the recipe it's a ratio all right and if i want to double the recipe i certainly can if i want to quadruple my recipe i certainly can i am not held to these exact amounts okay and neither are we in the chemistry field okay so let's check out interpreting chemical equations, okay? So what does exactly a balanced chemical reaction even tell you? Well, I can draw a picture of N2, all right? So uh, what does an N2 look like? Well, I should have two nitrogen atoms bonded together. There you go. I'll have, see there, the coefficient of an N2 is really a one. So I just have one N2. So what about this? Well, this tells me I need three H2s, all right? Here's one, here's two, and here's three. And now what am I going to make? I'm going to make two molecules of NH3. So I have one nitrogen and three hydrogens, and I have one nitrogen and three hydrogens. Well, what do you notice? Is it balanced? Well, I have two blues. I have two blues. I have six reds. I have six reds. You remember what I said about what we learned in chapter one? What's the chemical reaction where bonds are broken? So apparently I broke all these bonds here and new bonds are formed. There they are. So let's check this out. Number of atoms, okay? This is like what we did with balancing. How many blue nitrogen atoms do I have? Two. How many red Hydrogen atoms do I have? Well, count them up. Two, four, and six. All right. How many total atoms do I have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Huh. What do you notice? What's two plus six? Well, that equals eight, doesn't it? Yep. What about molecules? Oh, by the way, here we go. It does work, doesn't it? How many molecules of N2 do I have? I have one. How many um, molecules of H2 do I have? I have three. How many molecules of ammonia, NH3, do I have? Two. So the question is, does one plus three equal two? Um, no, it does not. So this is not the law of conservation of matter, is it? So you don't count your number of molecules. You need to count your number of atoms, okay? All right, let's keep going. What about moles? Well, I have one mole of N2. I have three moles of H2. And I have two moles of NH3, of ammonia. So does one plus three 
equal to? Mm, no, it does not. Let's keep going. Well, mass. Oh, we should remember how we did that earlier. Okay, so I have two nitrogen atoms. So how do I figure out its molar mass? Isn't it two times 14? Uh -huh. How many hydrogen atoms do I have? I have six. So what's each, um, uh, each hydrogen weigh? 1.01. So what is, well, I have two nitrogens. And I have a total of six um, hydrogens. So if I were to add this up, don't I get like 34.03? Something like that. No, no, no. 34 point, I'm sorry, 08. There we go. And that's what I get here. Isn't this 34.08? Yes, it is. All right. So does this work out? And the, oops, sorry about that. The answer is yes. It does. So here's my conservation of mass. Let's look at the last one. All right, volume. Well, guess what? One mole of a gas is 22.4 liters. Do you remember that? So one mole is 22.4 liters. Three moles is gonna be like 67.2. And two moles is um, like, uh, 44.8 all right does that add up no it does not all right so go back to here what what have i accomplished all right why did i go through this what's the only two things that it worked out with the number of atoms and the mass let's scroll back up here again all right as we know in a chemical reaction atoms are conserved that's a law of conservation of matter. What else did I tell you to write down when we wrote this out? What else is conserved? Not just atoms, but mass. And isn't that what I'm showing you down here? Atoms are conserved, yes. And mass is conserved, yes. All right, let's keep going. All right, so here we go. Mass conservation in a chemical reaction. Mass and atoms are conserved in every chemical reaction. Okay, so let's again interpret the equation in terms of particles. So I have one magnesium, all right? So I made that um, kind of like a silvery color because magnesium solid is, is that kind of a color, all right? And then I have two HCLs, okay? So here's, oops, here's one, all right? And here's the other one. Hydrogen's the blue and chlorine is the green. Okay, um, I thought it'd be kind of colorful. Okay, and now I have one uh, magnesium chloride, so I need one silvery one and two of the greens, and then I have an H2. Okay, so are the particles, are the atoms conserved? Yes, I have one and one, two blues, two blues, two greens, two greens. Okay, so now it says interpret the equation in terms of moles. All right, so how do I do this? Well, how many moles of magnesium do I have? One. How many moles of uh, hydrochloric acid do I have? Two. It yields one mole of magnesium chloride and one mole of hydrogen gas. Okay. I'll give you a little bit of time if you need to to finish writing it off. All right. If I were you, I'd get a periodic table right now. You're going to need it. So pause this and grab your periodic table. Okay, welcome back. So it says interpret this equation in terms of mass. All right, well, how many um, moles of magnesium do I have? One, well, what's the molar mass of magnesium? 24.31, right? All right, then what? Well, what's the mass of hydrogen and chlorine? 1.01 and 35.45. Well, how many of those do I have? I have two of those, don't I? How many magnesium chlorides do I have? One. Add up those masses. And I have two moles of hydrogen gas. So this is what I have right here. One mole of my magnesium, two moles of hydrogen chloride, right? Hydrogen and chlorine. One mole of magnesium with two chlorines and two mole, or excuse me, and one mole of H2, right? Do your math, all right? What does that add up to? 
Do you have your maybe your, your phone? You find a calculator on your phone. If you have a calculator, that's great. I got this. All right, it does equal. There is the law of conservation of mass. All right. So if a student is conducting uh, this reaction as an experiment and found. We have, again, this is more of a real world situation, all right? This is what people like out in industry, they're not gonna have nice, neat one moles, right? They're gonna have real masses, okay? So if I have 48.62 grams of magnesium reacts with 145.84 grams of hydrochloric acid to produce 190.42 grams of magnesium chloride, how many grams of hydrogen are being made? All right, what am I gonna do, all right? Well, I'm going to, once again, use the law of conservation of mass, okay? So hang on a second. La, 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 la. Okay, so let me scroll this down. So I'm gonna use the law of conservation of, of mass. So let's see what's happening. I'm gonna take all my reactants all right, which is 48.62 and 145.84, I'm gonna produce 190.42 plus X, right? So if I do this, I add them together. So then subtract out how many um, grams of hydrogen do you have? I got 4.04. .04. Well, now what? How many moles is this? Oh, let's see if you remember this from uh, two sections ago, right? So how many moles is 4.04 .04 grams periodic table. All right, I need to find the periodic table of H2, not H, H2. So what's the mass of H2 is 2.02. .02. Hey, one mole goes on top. So guess what? You got two moles of H2, okay? And so that is it for this section. Uh, stay tuned for the next one. See you next time. Don't wait to be great. Bye-bye.